Hello, this is Renee Collins Cobb from The Ricochet Effect. This month, Dr. Abini el and myself are presenting the next podcast in a series of special edition episodes. This special edition of The Ricochet Effect is introducing a new podcast on WUKY called Aging Gracefully, hosted by Missy Ward. This is a podcast that will address the issues that accompany the aging process and talk about strategies to implement and engage. So please sit back and enjoy the very first episode of Aging Gracefully. It's the ricochet effect, ricochet effect. Hi, I'm Missy Ward, and thank you for joining us for our first show, Aging Gracefully, on 91.3 WUKY. This is a new podcast about women for women, along with the Sanders Brown Center on Aging at the University of Kentucky and our in-studio guests, we're going to talk about aging. We're just going to sit around the table together and talk about the things we talk about, maybe on Girls' Night Out, or when you're having one of those nights and you just need a girlfriend. We're going to talk about them. We're going to laugh about them. We may even cry. But we want you to be part of this, because without you, there really is no show. We'll be giving you an email address coming up where you can send your questions or even possibly call in, and we'll chat with you. So pull up a chair and let's get started. I'm delighted to have today's guests in studio are... Dr. Abini El Amin and Renee Collins Cobb. Welcome, ladies. Renee, I'll start with you. Just tell me how you feel about aging. How does it make you feel? Well, I'm going to probably go on the positive side because I have kind of a different outlook. Okay. And I think what surprised me is that how much your mental state is connected with how you age. Mm -hmm. And that I have felt like. My 30s and 40s were kind of more hard on me than my 50s. And hmm. I have really honestly kind of flipped so <laughs> this process enjoying. into what our real age is. And it was so funny because I remember, gosh, it was probably in the 90s when Dr. Oz first came out and yeah. ro rose to popularity. Mm -hmm. And he had this formula for like, what is your real age? Right. And the I real age. It was a book. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, I just got online back then with what you had. It wasn't very much. But what was so interesting to me is that so much more was calculated in than just your physical age and your number. Right. And I was kind of surprised to find out I was a little bit younger than what I was. Go, so girl. I'm really hoping that that's translated over the course of the last 20 years. Um, I think what's surprising to me, and I've heard this from a lot of other people that are further down the road than I am, is that we don't really realize how old we are until our first health challenge probably happens. Mm. And I hear people say that I feel this age inside, but my body tells me constantly that I'm a different age. So. Right. What a beautiful perspective. I just love that because, yeah, I mean, there's not anything we can do about it. We might as well embrace it. Abini, come on, girl. Well, for me, when I was younger, I was an athlete. And mm -hmm. um, so throughout my career, I'm just not as active as I used to be because I don't have the same time that I did to to be a cheerleader and to teach fitness and to run and play tennis and all the things. And your body, it takes a toll if after you are not as active. And so um, the sagging and the bagging that, that you talk about really resonate with me. And it, it it's a gut check. You know, I mean, in terms of your confidence and um, how you feel about yourself. So I'm here to talk about all the things and to get to that place where I can embrace aging differently uh, or aging better. Um, feel good and, about it. And then feel good about it. So, yeah, I mean, over time, a woman's body is going to change because she goes through several things, whether those are the hormones or, you know, the. And the hormones. The hormones. And the hormones. And the hormones. And the hormones. And perimenopause, menopause, so forth and so on. And how that really impacts your life, how, again, it impacts your confidence. You know, when you say that athletic thing, because it's so funny that you mention that, because I've always wondered why we can't do the things now that we did when we were younger. For example, cartwheels or tumbling. My mother used to say, I used to be able to bend like that. And I thought to myself, why can't she now? <laughs> now I know. At some point, we stopped. 
we got busy, we weren't limbering up, we weren't going to class, we weren't cheering or competing, and all of a sudden we lost that skill. And I guess we get busy with other things. Yeah, I, but I agree with Renee, and that is it's all about mindset. So um, in my early 40s, I was noticing all these body changes and less VO2 max just because I wasn't using my VO2s. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's a whole big deal. And, too. And, and so I was you know, feeling some kind of way about it. But then as I have gotten into my later 40s, I have just readjusted in terms of mindset and just said, you know what? I'm going to use it until I can't use it anymore. And I feel better than I have felt in a, in a long time, even before COVID. So um, it really is about mindset and how you view yourself and um, how you embrace aging. Yeah, you know, when I got to 50, Mm -hmm. something happened. I didn't care if somebody saw that I had fat on my legs, which, of course, I don't. (laughs) Of course you don't. No, no, I never. (laughs) Kind of get that okay with yourself. Unfortunately, as we age as well, we go through a lot of emotional things like loss. And I think that really puts you face-to-face with aging as well. What do you think? In 2014, so I lost probably four of my best friends um, to cancer that were Mm. my age at that time. Mm. And I really, since that point, have really embraced getting older. And it really changed the way that I look at things because I realize when I wake up every morning that that's not a privilege that everybody has had. And to feel like I complain about it. It just feels like I'm not honoring the people that did not have that opportunity. And some of them were two of more really close members in my family. And it just really made me realize that I was not going to ever be hard on myself anymore. And I also think it takes being in the right relationship and putting the right people around you. Skill set plus mindset, right? Like like you said. Yeah, it fit together. I went through, I think in, really, I think in our 30s, actually 20s, 30s, we start really being very consumed about what we're wearing and how our hair looks and all of that. And I will just say I've had to just learn just to not pay attention to it. I get myself ready. That's the best I can hope for. And I'm good with it. And it's about accepting that. And I think, you know, you're you're right on, on point is that you wake up in the morning, you get up, you get ready, and you do the best that you can do. And that's perfect. But I was just going to say, hey, why are we not celebrating the fact that we are even having this conversation? Hold on. It's my plastic surgeon. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I'll call him back. That too. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, we should be celebrating. Uh, you know, we know all that stuff. It's just so hard. Common sense is not common practice, though. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> I tell people that all the time. Um, we know what's right for us to do, but time and stresses get in the way. I'll add on to like getting proper sleep. Oh to yeah, what you said. absolutely. And I mean, I've just recently discovered there's a connection between weight and sleep. You know, and I mean. <laughs> And cortisol. Who would have ever thought, right? (laughs) And eating a bunch of ice cream before you go to bed. (laughs) That too. (laughs) But it's so good. Mm -hmm. You know, that vice that I know I don't need. It Um, makes you feel emotionally great, right? It does. Mm -hmm. It feeds my soul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's okay sometimes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that happiness shows in that belly bulge. It shows in the wrinkles. It shows in the lack of sleep, the not making the best choices. And, of course, the feeling of um, being unwell or just not being your best self. For you. Yeah, we're all different. But we're all the same. You know what I mean? We have things in common yes. way more than we don't. Yeah. You know, and I wish the world would figure that out, but that's a whole other well, thing. Especially from a science and clinical perspective, you know, in terms of, again, how a woman's body ages and the cycles that it goes through and uh, accepting that, that if you live... You are going to age, and it is a process. Dr. El Amin and Renee Collins-Cobb, thank you so much for joining me today. I love your stories. Coming up on the next show, we'll talk with experts from the Sanders Brown Center on Aging at the University of Kentucky about how to keep our brains sharp. I'm Missy Ward for WUKY, and until next time, keep on aging gracefully. It's the ricochet effect, ricochet effect. It's the ricochet effect, ricochet effect.